um, but it would be intense and it would be fast and it would be quick. I think if we could improve the quality of coach development, governing bodies to try and improve, improve this area and offer you more knowledge to help you improve. And then ultimately create a team of freedom and responsibility. And this is a Brian Ashton quote. You know, this is what he would always say to us when we were academy managers and we were progressing through the ranks. You know, freedom and responsibility. So course winning is important, you know, particularly if you're a, an age grade coach or a, a, a development coach. You know, it is important, but it's not the only thing. You know, at the top end, it, it clearly is. It clearly is. But still, I still think that you have to empower your players to give them freedom to make decisions on the field. Because ultimately... We're not playing rugby football, we're playing rugby. And the players are the ones who have to have their talents on stage. They're the ones who put their bodies on the line. They're the ones who make the decisions. And we need to empower them and give them that responsibility to do it. So here's a couple of ideas of games that, that I would use. Um, single touch, one over. So, um, so just a touch and pass game. Um, one over means there's only one in the rook. Sometimes when your number's down, um, you, if you put two in a rook every time, then you lose any sort of alignment. Um, double touch is the what game I described before, where you touch by one person, you can keep on running. If you touch by a second person, then you've got to either go down and present the ball, or whatever parameters you set in the game, you lift the ball between your legs or whatever. Offload touch is the same as double touch, but if you touch by the second person, you've got one second to offload the ball. Um, lift touch is like a super quick game, there's no rook effectively. So if you double touch, then you lift the ball between your legs and the nearest guy who's turned behind you must move the ball away. Uh, retreat touch, so you're attacking against the defensive team. Where the defender touches you, they have to run back to the nearest line and come forward again. So you're creating, disconnecting the defence the whole time. Transition touch, you do a lot of transition games where you're attacking one minute. So maybe there's three teams. Um, one team's defending the, playing across the field, the 15 uh, metre line. Another team's attacking against them. And the team three, if you like, are waiting to attack. The team that's attacking become the defensive team. Team three step forward become the attacking team. The team that defended rotate around the back. Um, I've got an image of that in the defence presentation on uh, the 5th of May of me coaching that transition touch game, which, which I, I like playing a lot because sometimes when you've got an attack coach and a defence coach and they're, they're independent of each other, then you go, right, let's coach attack, which you do, and then you go to the defence coach, let's coach defence, and you never coach transition when actually the majority of the game is transition. Uh, two ball touch, as it says, you know, you play touch and pass, uh, and then there's another coach who's on the field with a different ball, or you just throw another, another ball in. And there's 101 variations of that, but um, uh, I've probably talked for long enough. Um, there's a lot in that. Um, key takeaways for me would be think about your coaching, um, think about how you coach, not just what you coach, um, think about the game. Think about how defences are trying to organise themselves and let's think of really good ways to challenge those defences because we don't want the situation where defences are on top um, all the time, albeit on the 5th of May, I'll be talking about defence being on top. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'll look forward to your questions. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, some great lessons there from Stuart, not just about... Uh, attack and the principles of attack, but some generally really great tips on how to coach and coaching philosophy that I think are uh, applicable to all scenarios in our coaching. Uh, just to answer a couple of questions that have come through, uh, we are going to ask Stuart for the slides uh, and we'll share them via the next webinar that Stuart does. They'll be available to download when you uh, book onto that webinar. Um, the videos won't be a part of that and we're not able to share the recording of this uh, because we don't own the content. A lot of the games that you saw on the last slide there that Stuart referenced, you can find versions of those on www.keepyourbootson.co.uk and look in the games uh, section there, the Game Changers videos. Uh, we're taking a note of some of the specific questions you've asked here, and we're going to add those and try and put them to Stuart on the 5th of May when he does his second webinar, which is on the principles of defence. Um, we'll also um, be having the opportunity to, to ask him questions about defence as well at that time. Uh, next week, uh, next Tuesday training webinar, 
is on refereeing advantage with professional referees Ian Tempest and Christoph Ridley. Uh, so you can find uh, registration uh, details for that session uh, on Twitter. If you just search uh, RFU Game Dev or England Rugby Coaching, you'll find uh, the link to book yourself onto that session. That's at 7 p.m. on Tuesday evening. Uh, thanks very much again for taking the time out to to join this webinar, to listen. Uh, I hope you found it worthwhile, and we hope to see you again on future webinars. Thank you very much.